All right, let us become centered and open our hearts to receive whatever the Spirit would have us receive here today as um, Jeremiah McLean leads us into worship by uh, video, one of my favorite recordings. <laughs> You know, I, I, I love it, but, you know, he, he, that's one of his sort of uh, signature pieces. Um, he and, and Tim uh, play it at the Noel concert. And um, right now I'm just so moved, uh, really moved to tears, uh, thinking of um, him recording that in their old house mm -hmm. and thinking it's called Comfort, Comfort, You My People and uh, what they have been through. Um, Anamika and Luke and Jeremiah, and this week they're moving into their new house. And um, just uh, that's why Anamika is away this today. So I'm just really, uh, really deeply moved um, to think of them. So let's all hold them in our thoughts and prayers and you know, just kind of dedicate this service uh, to them. So good morning. Uh, and um, Welcome to the United Church of Stratford, Vermont, on this sixth Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, Epiphany is a season of light, um, and it began with a star rising in the east, and it will end in two weeks uh, with, on the 27th, it's going to end with divine radiance revealed on the mountain of transfiguration. During Epiphany, we look for the light of God uh, shining through Jesus and through all God's creation. Um, the image of, of all our candles on Christmas Eve is still fresh in our minds, reminding us that the, the Christ light is in each one of us. Its, its purest manifestation is in the love we shine through acts of mercy and justice, um, kindness and care. And we come here to nurture that light or to find it when we have lost it with the help of the music and words and silence, and most of all, with the help of one another, this loving community. Love, love is what makes a church shine as a candle of hope. And the spark of that flame is our conscious intention to shine the light of Christ-like love to one another. That makes everything else possible. So please reach across the borders of your Zoom boxes today, um, because we're living in a, in a hard, time. And every one of us can use more love and light. Uh, please see the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, you can find the bulletin online by going to the uh, menu on our website across the top of the uh, welcome page. Um, 
the one, one joyful announcement is that the church council and its steering committee have decided that we will return to our in-person and Zoom hybrid services next Sunday, um, February 20th. Um, uh, Anamika McLean and the choir will be here uh, for the morning service. And then Anamika and Becky Bailey and Jim Schley are offering a concert uh, that afternoon. Um, so it'll be just a really uh, joyful re-entering of the, of the sanctuary. Uh, I'm going to switch now to gallery view and look at um, and uh, see if anybody has any announcements they'd like to uh, they'd like to make. Anybody, just raise your hand if you have an announcement. Not seeing any. Um, so thank you uh, to Vin Wiley, our Zoom master and recording engineer uh, extraordinaire. And, um, and thank you to Anamika and Becky and the choir for all the recordings um, that they have made over the past two years. Um, they have this, uh, Becky and Anamika have this Sunday off, so we're going to hear one of those recordings that the choir did um, now for our, uh, for our introit. Religions exist uh, to help us live, uh, to help us endure challenges and temptations, to help us find the path of our heart's calling that will fulfill our meaning and purpose. Religions exist because wisdom tells us there is a path, a path of righteousness, a, a sacred way that leads through every moment toward love and light and abundant, harmonious life. Religions help us discern which paths will lead in that direction and which won't. The task facing every spiritually awake person is to walk as far along the right path as possible, growing ever more spiritually mature, living ever more closely to the ideal. Before the word Christian was in, invented, uh, Christianity was known as simply the way, the way, because live truly and fully, it leads us to oneness with God and all creation and, to, and leads us to lives of unconditional compassion and love and fulfillment and meaning. It's a good way, it's a good path, but it is also a hard path at times. Uh, including the coming darkness and wilderness of Lent, which really symbolizes that the this, this struggle, um, as well as the light of, of Easter's promised land. We need the Spirit's guidance and strength every step of the way. Um, so let us make it our intention today to open our hearts wide to the Spirit's presence and gifts. 
let us worship together. And now um, we will sing along with the uh, video of Spirit of the Living God. We're going to remain muted and um, we'll sing it through twice with the, the video sings through it twice. We'll sing through it twice. And make this, uh, make this a, a meditative, uh, prayerful, um, make, it, make it your prayer. Let us sing together. Last week, uh, for our, our uh, children's time, I told a story from C.S. Lewis's Narnia book, The Silver Chair. Um, and this week, I have a story from The Last Battle, which is the final in the Narnia series. Um, it is the end of time, and the heroes of Narnia have entered a place that is like heaven, as some people picture it to be. It's full of love and light and joy and beautiful springtime flowers. Life is good. And it's called um, Aslan's country, and Aslan, the Christ-like lion, and all his faithful followers are there. But so is a soldier who served an enemy nation and their unloving, unforgiving, angry God. And when the Narnians ask the soldier what he is doing there, he explains that he asked Aslan the same question. You know, what am I doing here? He had grown up hearing that Aslan was evil. But Aslan welcomed him and told him that it didn't matter what God he followed. What mattered was that all his life, the soldier had tried to be good and loving and kind. And he had always wanted to increase in virtue and, and knowledge of the truth. Aslan said that all good and loving acts counted as serving him, even if they were done in the name of an enemy God. And any quest for truth and virtue led in the end to Aslan and his way of being, whether recognizing Aslan or not, whether ever using Aslan's name or believing in Aslan or not. So the soldier's army had invaded Narnia, cut down its forests, exploited its resources, enslaved its people, all in the name of their god. But really, they were serving the selfish greed of their nation's leaders who told the lie that it was the will of their god. The soldier followed orders because he wanted to be virtuous, so he participated in these things. But, but eventually his dedication to goodness and truth came into conflict with his nation's actions. And that was when he took the path that led to Aslan's realm. Sometimes the people around us may act in a way that we believe is not good or true. And C.S. Lewis wants us to see how important it is that we hold to our intention uh, 
to do the right thing, whatever the context, whatever culture we're part of, whatever institution um, that we hold to, to our um, intention to do the right thing. And he, uh, C.S. Lewis also wants us to remember that whoever tries to be loving, kind, and good is on our side and on God's side, even if they are called our enemy. It, it can be hard uh, to stay on the right path um, when people around us um, seem not to be interested in, uh, in being good or doing the right thing. And there's something that can help us remember our intention and hold to it. In fact, it is the most important thing um, that, we can, that we can do. Um, Right, pray. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we're going to um, recite now or, or read from the screen share this uh, new version of the, the Lord's Prayer or a recent newer version. Um, and let the words, uh, look for the words that remind you of your intention of how you would like to, to live. Uh, read this as a statement of intention. Let us, uh, let us pray. Oh, and I invite you all to unmute because it's really wonderful to um, to hear us all. Even though it's, it's strange on Zoom, it's really wonderful to hear all, all of our voices. So let us pray together. Creator, Creator Redeemer, Sustainer, Way, way, way truth, truth, and Life, Force, light, 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 May you rule our world. Thank you. Thank you for nurturing and guiding us, giving us and helping us forgive. Lead us away from Please save us from all source our resources, all our Thank you. Thank you all. And, um, and now uh, we will hear the, uh, the choir's uh, anthem. Today is Christina Robinson. The first reading is from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, 
and their leaves do not wither. The next reading is from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses five through eight. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. And the third reading is from Luke chapter 6, verses 17 to 21a. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Thus ends the reading. Thank you. So having heard those passages, I invite you to picture a tree in your mind. Uh, a tall, majestic oak or a gnarly apple, uh, maybe this time of year, a, a, a coconut palm. <laughs> um, and, and now plant that tree next to a picturesque stretch of flowing water. The tree leans toward the water, extending its roots into the moist soil to drink. And now imagine there is a terrible drought. The grass is brown, trees in the distance have withered leaves, their fruit is dropping off prematurely, but the tree planted by the stream of water is green. Its fruit is ripening. The shade under it is dark and cool. It is creating its own little climate of well-being. Think of all who look at it with love and gratitude, who feel hope in a hard time. You are that tree. You are that tree every time you stretch your roots out to drink from the stream of living water that is God's spirit flowing through this world, giving you comfort, wisdom, and strength. You are that tree every time you show compassion for someone who is in pain or in need. Every act on behalf of justice for the oppressed, every step to protect the vulnerable earth, any time you bring healing of any kind to anyone. You are a tree planted by streams of living water, casting cool shade, bearing fruit in due season. This congregation is also such a tree. Uh, uh, picture it as a graceful, many trunked banyan tree beside a, a sacred pool. It is easy to get discouraged about churches today. Uh, not just what we read in the news of scandals and, and terrible things that have happened, but um, almost every church I know is struggling and feeling like an endangered species. And yet, look at how alive and green and fruitful this tree is, our congregation. Uh, Anamika and Becky and the whole faithful choir have kept providing music through the pandemic, lifting us Sunday after Sunday. And Anamika and the Mannheim Fund for the Arts have brought extraordinary concerts to the sanctuary or to the internet. The Mission Committee is more active than ever, making significant contributions to our local support systems in Stratford, as well as donations to national and global work for peace, justice, and the care of God's creation. The deacons have a great burst of new energy with the addition of Debbie and Cameron uh, to Becky's experienced leadership. 
their deacons fund has been fully replenished and it's actively supporting people in need. The addition of the Reverend Deidre Ashton to our staff increases our capacity for providing pastoral care and spiritual direction. Um, we're blessed uh, by the passion, the training and experience that she brings to the church and to the community. Joey and Danette have provided uh, meaningful and fun story times for all ages. One of my greatest joys to come out of this pandemic. Uh, the connections, reflections, and sharing during worship recently have been extremely meaningful. Uh, many people are thankful for the role that Sunday mornings have played in their lives on this COVID wilderness journey. We owe tremendous thanks to David Webb and others for putting in place our recording and streaming system. And Vin Wiley is just simply amazing <laughs> in all he does. Um, and we're, we are bearing helpful fruit to many more people than we could without this technology. We don't have as many lay leaders as we would like right now, um, hint, hint. <laughs> um, but, but those we have are keeping the essential logistics of the church in better shape than I have ever seen. Um, and the church council has been doing heroic work, uh, rising to face the challenges. And what holds this all together and makes us one tree is that individually and collectively, we extend our roots toward God. We stretch in the direction of the Spirit's living water. And that is what gives us the, uh, the grace and the beauty and the joy. Um, it's what gives us the Spirit's fruit to bear. We are united by these shared good intentions. The Latin verb intendo uh, means literally to stretch out or extend towards something. If we extend and stretch our roots in the direction of the spirit of God and Christ, then the good intentions we form will lead us to bear their fruit. We all know the saying, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but the road to heaven is paved with good intentions too. <laughs> A monk was asked once uh, what they did in his monastery, uh, which was famous for its miracles and spiritual enlightenment. And he paused, and then he replied, we fall and get up. We fall and get up. We fall and get up. God knows we are going to fall. What matters is that we get up and dust off our good intentions and let them stretch out again along the road to heaven. I came across a, a story last week that some of you may also have seen, and I apologize if this is a spoiler uh, for anyone. Um, a, a man I will call Phil uh, is shipwrecked on a small desert island um, with a woman and another man. And Phil gets in a terrible fight with a man and is so outraged and angry that he refuses to cooperate with them for their survival or for their escape. So Phil, by himself, builds a raft out of driftwood to sail to civilization. And he does a terrible job. Um, but in the night, in a thunderstorm, the other man sneaks up and finishes the raft as an act of, uh, of conciliation, a gift of conciliation. Phil is still angry when he sees it. But then he discovers that the other man has caught a terrible chill. And Phil recognizes that the man could die if he does not keep him both hydrated and warm. So he collects all the wood he can. But most of the dry wood on the island has gone into the raft. So he starts to sacrifice the one hope he had of escape, log by log. By the next morning, the raft is entirely burned and the man has recovered. They have no hope now, but they are reconciled and friends again. Then suddenly a ship appears on the horizon coming their way. The sailors saw the flame and the smoke of the bonfire that Phil had built. And they came knowing whoever was on the island was in distress. If Phil had tried to save himself by sailing in that feeble raft, he probably would have drowned. But because he was deep in his roots, 
a truly good man, he turned his intention back toward he helping and healing and acting out of unconditional, all-forgiving, Christ-like love. He set his self-interest aside, and that saved him. Our task is to keep returning to our good intentions, to let ourselves be recalled to them by the spirit of God's love within us, the Christ living in us, no matter how far we have strayed. To the extent that our roots are drinking from those waters, we are a tree of life. We have the fruit of the spirit to offer and we are part of the best hope that this world has. So let us pray together in silence, um, letting our awareness now sink into that, the comforting, life-giving waters of the spirit in the depths of our soul, drinking that in and just resting there in silence in preparation for rising to fulfill our good intentions. Let us pray together in silence. Amen. Now we will sing, uh, remaining muted, um, sing Take My Life and Let It Be from the video.
So please remember that we are uh, taking our offering online. Um, it's on the, on the welcome page of our website, just below the slideshow, um, or you can send donations into the church by mail. Uh, the offering gives us the opportunity to, um, you know, fulfill our good intentions with good deeds uh, collectively. Um, it enables this church to, to stand as a tree planted by streams of water, uh, bearing the Spirit's fruits. Um, it makes possible all we do. Um, uh, or, and it's, you know, the other thing that makes possible all we do is, um, as we've kind of heard throughout this conversation, um, is the, uh, the intention to love one another and to make this the most loving community that we possibly can, because that, um, that inclusivity through unconditional love, um, it's, it's not just an inclusivity, but it's the love and the, um, the care and the, the kindness extended, um, uh, forgiving ourselves, forgiving others. Um, uh, that, you know, that's the first offering uh, that we have to make. Um, but the, uh, we need the money too. <laughs> so thank you for that sacrifice and that offering. Um, let, let's join together now in a spirit of, uh, of prayer. Um, Holy God, in a hard time, in a, in a dry time, uh, in a wilderness, in all our struggles, we are so grateful to have this, this hope uh, and this sure knowledge that there is a source of comfort, a source of guidance, a source of strength when we need it most, and that we can, we can turn in the peace and, and, uh, and quiet, or even in the midst of stress and, and inner cacophony, we can turn and go to the deep pool within us of the Spirit's waters. But it's always there. It's always there. And we have a path to it. And, and by going to it, we find our path through any, any moment or any trial. It may take a while, it may take a long time, but if we keep going and we keep dwelling there, step by step, it will come to us. And we are so grateful that when we can't find it within us, we can come together as a community and be with people who also are trying to find their way. And we can benefit from their experience and their wisdom and their hope. They can, they can hold the candle for us when we can find no light at all. And we are so grateful for that and for the love that they have that, that cares enough for us, even if they, if they don't know us. Um, that is the, the beauty of this loving community that forms uh, around the spirit of, that was in um, Jesus. That spirit of, of unconditional love and, and, and the, the passion for healing and helping and lifting and caring for others, whoever they are. So thank you for letting us be a part of that this morning. And thank you for... Um, all that we have found that has been of light or that has encouraged us, um, that has redirected us, reminded us of our best intentions. Um, please help us to go out and live them. Help us to carry this light into the world um, in every interaction. Um, and please may it ripple out into this conflicted nation and into this, uh, into this world with all its threats of, of violence and environmental uh, degradation, please help what we have serve that in ways that we know and ways we cannot know. 
We pray with gratitude and hope and with love. In Jesus' name, amen. And the benediction is um, from the book of Philippians, uh, continuing the, pas pas the passage that was the benedic benediction last week. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is honorable, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Practice what you have learned and received and heard from the saints around you, and see them do. And be blessed this day and all days by the presence of the God of peace. Amen. And now we will end the service in a spirit of prayer, listening to a postlude recorded by Anamika. Amen. Oh,